All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Tuesday, December 4th, 2018, school committee meeting here at Kingsborough High School. I will remind everyone that these meetings are audio and video recorded. At this time, I call the meeting to order, and we'll start with introductions to my left. Sharon Fairbanks. Robert Mullen. Good evening, Julie Guastucci. Good evening, Mike Moran. Good evening, Mark Rango, assistant superintendent. Hi, Mike Flanagan, superintendent. Anthony Terrell. Ryan McMahon. Paul Mitchell. Joe Messina, Business Administrator. Thank you very much. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. At this time, I'd. Uh, Seek a motion to approve the November 20th, 2018 school committee meeting. Make that motion. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that carries 6 0 0. Correspondence. Fine. Uh, Mr. Chair, we have one piece of correspondence tonight. If you go to your drive, you will see the FY20 budget schedule as developed by the town administrator and as approved by the board of selectmen last night at their meeting. Uh, it has every date in there that, that, that we'll need for uh, the FY20 budget development, including tri-board dates of January 7th and January 28th. Uh, what I'd like to do tonight is, is, is get a sense from the committee if we have availability for those dates. Uh, if we cannot make the tri-board, I told uh, Town Administrator Hanson I would let him know. But uh, I'm hoping, hopeful that, you know, because uh, they're in front of it a little bit early now, January 7th, 28th, everyone should be available. So I just want to gauge the committees. I will be available. We're all good. Historically, we historically have had a problem with 10 of these meetings with a, with a quorum, so. Okay. Great. Shouldn't be a problem. Awesome. Excellent. So that's in there. The only other thing I'll draw attention to on the uh, budget timeline is uh, the capital asset dates are in there beginning in January 29th and ending at the end of February. So there's a really short window for three or four meetings um, to develop that plan. We're going to talk a little bit more about capital asset later tonight. And that's it for correspondence. Right. Visitors, comments, and questions? Seeing none, share the success. So thank you. Congrats to the Tinsborough High School football team for their win, their 32 7 win against UD on Thanksgiving Eve. Fall Sports Awards was held last Thursday to recognize and celebrate the success of all of our fall athletes. This wrapped up the fall season as we head into the winter season. The video <coughs> helped put start the holiday season. Playing at the Festival of Trees on Saturday night in Town Center, and NHS is currently running a campaign with the Underground at the high school to help support the adoption. All right, thank you. Subcommittee update uh, negotiations. We did have a meeting last week. They're going well. Motion to take. Oh, personnel. I'm sorry. Did I skip that? No. Uh, well, you did. All right. Also, it's not often I'm right, Joe. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but the motion to take items now. We're good. We're good. All right. Okay. Right. So, right. negotiations are committee. Uh, negotiating with the current professionals. Um, it's going well. We have another meeting scheduled here um, later in December. And uh, that's it. I'll get you more as we move on. Personnel. Uh, Mr. Chair, we have one new hire, Sean Gregoire, second shift custodian of TES. Unfinished business. Capital asset. Send it over to Mr. Mullen. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, capital asset met uh, just uh, half an hour ago. Uh, we went over our priorities again for the um, for the. Um, for the entire process for this year, uh, and I touched on these a little bit last uh, last meeting. Uh, but what I'd like to do is get any feedback from all of you this, uh, tonight, uh, what your feelings are, and uh, hopefully approve uh, the list and <coughs> what our priority should be for this uh, for this year. Uh, still on for our number one priority being the district wide phone. Uh, life safety and fire alarm systems throughout the district. Um, phone systems and have been failing in several of the buildings 
Uh, we've uh, not been able to uh, have any voicemail, uh, and th th this just caused a lot of issues uh, with people calling in and trying to leave a message. Uh, that also includes the fire alarm system uh, in this building. Uh, there are, uh, they've, they've been having issues up in the duct, uh, in the uh, heating decks, uh, and the uh, sensors up there are so old, they have not been able to find any replacement parts for them, or it's been very difficult finding them, and it's time to update that entire system before there is a problem with it. Um, could, could I ask just one question? Sure. On this? So the, how much of that 192 is the middle school? Do, would, do we know what that breakout would be? So the middle school would be about $40,000 of that, and that would be just for phones. Okay. The life safety system, the, the, the fire panel here at the high school is about 67000 and about 125000 would be phones as well as alarm system at the elementary school. Now, fortunately, the, the system, the equipment that we're putting into the current middle school, that will be able to be taken out and put into any new building and anything additional we may need can be added to that. Yeah, okay. This system that we purchased would have a much larger capacity uh, than uh, might be currently. <coughs> so it would be able to cover a brand new building. Cool, All right, thank you. Uh, the other priority that we've identified as far as the buildings is the roof on the elementary school. Uh, it, the uh, asphalt shingles are uh, 20 years old. Uh, it's been an issue, there was an issue with the initial installation. Uh, we're having leaks in the upper uh, floors, uh, and you know, it's it's an issue. It, it could be it could lead to having some mold up there in the building, and then just being able to use some of those rooms on a regular basis. We don't want this to get any worse. It's something we really need to address as soon as possible. Uh, the gym bleachers here at the high school, there is uh, issues with ADA compliance. Um, again, also, these are, are very old and having difficult times fi uh, finding parts uh, to repair it. Uh, the exterior stairs leading out to the uh, field, uh, the cement is cracking. Uh, it could be considered a dangerous issue. Um, the, the utility gator, uh, it's for the, it's, it's like a John Deere tractor type of uh, vehicle that allows the uh, maintenance department to move things back and forth outside. Um, <coughs> and the science sinks up here in the high school, uh, again, are also not ADA compliant. And the last item on this list is the truck that the maintenance department uses. Uh, it's almost 10 years old. It's got quite a bit of miles on it. Uh, it's something we want to look at possibly <coughs> uh, in the very near future. Um, those, those are the items that we'd be looking at asking the town to support uh, typically by use of borrowing or using the funds that are available within the capital asset reserve account. Uh, or uh, any free cash that may be available uh, next year from this budget. The other items on our list, uh, something we spoke about last year was the track renovation here at the high school. Uh, the uh, Department of Oversaw a fantastic installation of our new field. And I think the field, the, the beautiful field, only makes the what we have uh, remaining of a track look absolutely awful. Uh, it, uh, it it's a safety issue with that. Um, it's also not. It doesn't have enough lanes for us to hold any competitions here. It's right now in the in the condition it's in is useless. And uh, so we're looking for support uh, in being able to renovate that. Uh, near future and also the tennis courts over at the elementary school um, we don't own them we don't maintain them <coughs> but they're on our property even though they're on the bicentennial fields we're the ones that see them every day we're the ones that receive the complaints uh, for the condition and so it's something that we're going to bring up as a possible replacement
Who actually owns those courts? It's, on the it's, on the it's, it's no different than Pierce Field, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. But but as, as Mr. Marlon alluded to, I think it's one of those things where we don't be a situation where we're, we're like the track right now, where it gets <coughs> beyond repair. They have preliminary cracks in in the courts. It's ten thousand dollars per court to resurface. So we have five tennis courts and one basketball court over there. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're estimating sixty thousand dollars to resurface the entire uh, court surface before we lose them. <coughs> So what I would do is open it up for any questions, uh, comments. Is the intention to attack all this this year? Um, that would be wonderful, <laughs> uh, although highly <laughs> unlikely. Um, in discussions that we've had, um, it, it was great having Michael here with, uh, uh, in the meeting today. Um, I, I think what we really need to focus on as far as the top list is the phone and alarm systems for the district and the roof shingles. Those are our two big priorities this year for the <coughs> list. Uh, if we can get anything else done, uh, if the will is there for it, that would be wonderful. Um, and all of these items will be brought up in our meetings because they are on our list as priorities. Oh. Um, but, the, and then of course the, the track renovation. Are we at risk for any kind of fines for not being compliant with those other items? Not as of right now. Okay. Um, there's been no other renovations within anything that's been deemed as ADA um, compliancy issues. So since there haven't been any renovations, we <coughs> haven't had to uh, do a renovation for that to, make, to bring these items up to, up to code on that. Not as of yet. But it could keep us from doing anything else. And just to just to um, add one point, Mr. Mall, um, is is you know the, a lot of these items were or have been on our capital asset uh, plan for for several years. A lot, all of these items are identified in some form or another in the Lavalley Brenzinger uh, Comprehensive Facility Study. Uh, and now that that uh, Mr. Guthrie's on board, uh, just a different set of eyes looking at things. Um, you know, th there's nothing new that's jumping out. This this is what. Uh, we've identified over the past several years. I think the phones have really pushed themselves to the top of the list this year, um, given given the fact that they're failing uh, somewhat here on, on North Road. So, um, you know, I think that's that's what it is. We can identify all the projects in the world, but sometimes the batting order needs to change based on what we have in the school system. Yep. And each year they may jump around too. <coughs> right. I know in the past we put uh, parking lot on the capital exactly. asset, but something we're not going to do this year. Or? You know, I, I mean, we've had conversations about that in the past, and it's, you know, whether we want to invest in something like that that could change if we would ever start a new construction project. I'm just... Yeah, no, I understand what that. I'm, what I'm more, uh, wondering is we used to have a list of priorities of, mm -hmm. and, you know, it always got pushed to the end of the list because, as you said, it's not... Sure. Not the... Uh, the, the thing is just like the tennis court resurfacing. It's something that probably needs to be done in the next five years, but it doesn't need to be done next year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're still the there. Those, all of those, items, again, identified in the report and things that we see, we can all see, uh, that need to be done. They're still on the list. It's just not on a list that we're bringing forward for consideration uh, for this year. That's what I'd like to sort of get a handle on is what the list is. Mm -hmm. so I agree. I think that the phone system and the children's based on this list and the, probably the two most important things that uh, would require some, uh, some assistance. On. Absolutely. Thanks. Have you talked to CPC yet about the track? Was it too early? There have been informal discussions with, with some members, uh, but not with the entire uh, not with the entire group, so, yeah. And that would really be a function of the capital asset Absolutely. committee itself. Mm -hmm. So I think the goal tonight is to get this board to approve the priority list, and then Rob, Mike, and Amy will represent the school committee on that board, and that board would be the one I think that will reach out. Because I'm sure that there are other things that they're going to have to consider as well. Okay. Okay. Are there any state grants or anything for any of these ADA um, items like the... Uh, the science and <coughs> would, would any of that be 
I don't know if we can we, no, we, we can we can certainly we can certainly look. Um, my my quick answer is no. But short of MSBA. Short sure of MSBA. Okay. Most of the money is the fund. Exactly. Stipend these days. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm in support of the list um, as it reads. Um, thank you, Mr. Long and Mike and Amy for the work you guys put into uh, creating this and prioritizing it. Um, so I'd have to thank uh, Ryan Guthrie for all of his hard work. Yeah, I'd have to Guthrie. thank uh, our, uh, our superintendent, Mike Flanagan, and uh, business administrator, Joe Messina, for doing the work. We just, we just listened to them. <laughs> And agreed with them. So I think we would just seek it. So yes, yeah, so seek the motion to approve the subcommittee going forward with this list to the um, full capital asset committee. Mr. Chair, motion to um, adopt the prioritized list of the capital asset committee. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? <coughs> Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you for your support. Appreciate yeah, it. Carry six zero zero. Appointment to field use committee. Seeing that neither one of them are here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I'm gonna give this to Dr. Franco. This <laughs> one. <laughs> so I will uh, seek a motion to appoint Ryan Guthrie as the school representative to the field use committee. And Ann Palumbo as the fiscal year 19 citizen at large to the field news committee. Um, they're both more than happy to do this for us. <laughs> more than happy. <laughs> <laughs> so if I could get a motion to approve Ryan Guthrie and Andy Palumbo, that would be. Got a motion? Second. Any further discussion? I, I have some discussion. <laughs> Anytime you use a phrase, he was, or she was more than happy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to think about mental <laughs> Especially when they're not here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're very happy. Team <laughs> players. Uh, so all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That uh, carries six zero zero. Thank you, Ryan and Ann, for doing that for us. New business. First read policies. Um, today we looked at two policies that we had looked at last time with a few um, small changes. Um, policy 1.2, the school committee meeting, um, and it was a new drop box. And all this changed was that um, we added the place where we are now. So we meet at Team for High School um, Professional Development Center. And the second, um, and also another change is instead of the library's town office building, community room. So those are the two changes made on that policy. Otherwise, it's exactly the same. Um, and so we're going to be calling for a first read on that tonight. And then the second policy is 2.4, which is use of fields under joint jurisdiction of school recreation departments. And all we did to that was to link the appendix to it, which has the fees linked to it too, right? Yeah. Um, and so um, that's exactly the same. So we're going to come for a first read on that too. And that's all we did. Well, I'll seek a motion to approve policies 1.2 and 2.4 as a first read. Make that motion. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. That carries it. <coughs> Technology update. So, Mr. Chair, Mr. Piper's here tonight, uh, our Director of Technology, to kind of walk us through and provide an update of new initiatives in the district and kind of give you that 20,000 foot view of technology and, and where we are in Tingsboro. Um, in three short years, I, I think uh, Derek has done an incredible job of improving the infrastructure and improving um, connectivity for our students and staff. And uh, I'm excited to, to hear what he has to say tonight and certainly. Looking forward to answering any questions you may have. So I'm giving him, I'm, I'm filling time as he's setting up here. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing else nice to say, Derek, so I'm just going to turn it over. Yeah. <laughs> well, welcome, Derek. Thanks for coming out tonight. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's been three short months so far, but there's so much that's been going on. I'm putting this update together, and I said, you know, I'll keep it to 45 minutes, 50 minutes, and then we can get out of here. 
So I was told not to do that, so I tried to pick out some of the real big highlights that uh, are going on in again, just the first three months. So people get to hit the ground running this year as I walk around to the various schools, whether it's over at the elementary school, middle school, high school. Um, I see kids, I see teachers really engaging in technology at, at all different levels, which we'll talk about <coughs> in a little bit. Um, but there's a lot of good things happening. You see the green screen going on here. You see at the elementary school, they have a new news studio, and they're actually streaming that to YouTube in the morning. Um, they're recording that to YouTube for people to watch later. Uh, we just put a podcast room in over at the middle school, uh, which we're pretty excited about. Um, a couple of the high highlights of the district. We currently, again, Chromebooks, we've really kind of gone all in on Chromebooks for our district devices. We have roughly 750 of them right now, district-wide, um, give or take 10 or 20 at any given time. Uh, Kindle Fires, we have 72 at the second grade at the elementary school, and we're, we're really ramping up on how to best use those. We have a full day PD this Friday with the second grade um, on how we're going to use those Kindle Fires. So I'm pretty excited about that. Google Classroom, again, has been huge, as has all the Google, Google products. I think uh, last year, I figured it was at the end of the year or some point when I gave you an update, we had roughly 100 active classes. Um, I checked today, we have 168 active classes. So that's a big increase just in the first three months. Flipgrid, I threw that on there just because that's one of the video response systems that teachers are using, again, at all levels, whether it's the elementary, all the way up through high school. Um, that was a big, big win for, for our students. They really like to do the video response, give them a little voice, a little choice. Um, some students are more apt to respond via video than, than raising their hand in class or responding that way. Um, and I think a lot of this is really due to our digital learning specialists. So we have, you know, on our team, we have the guys that are keeping the lights on, supporting the teachers. Uh, they're doing a great job. We have our network admin and systems admin, same person. Um, doing both of those roles, doing a great job. Um, but the digital learning specialist gets a, a lot of the uh, limelight, if you will, because he's out and about. He's the one really interacting with the teachers. And Tom Barnum's done a great job. Um, all those things I mentioned were, you know, as well as keeping them supported, he's, he's the one responsible for getting them in there and showing people how to use them. And he's been busier this year than ever. So when I meet with him, you know, he tells me that this year he's being pulled in, in many different directions, which is great. Again, I saw him working with the principal on a podcast the other day. I've seen him at the elementary school working with teachers and, and um, some admin over there. So he's all over. So he travels around. He's doing a great job. Um, he has his own podcast right down there, which, which I'd like to highlight. Uh, he just started. He has two episodes. One he did with an English teacher at the high school and one he did with Chris Paul, at principal at the middle school. Um, and they go back and forth about technology and, and use of technology in schools. Um, especially the last one with the principal, uh, Mr. Paul, which is really good one. Some good, good stuff came out of that. Uh, he also has a website, which he highlights every week. He sends it out um, for teachers to look at, with highlights of what teachers um, did some great things that week, what things are up and coming. Um, so again, can't, can't say enough about that role, so that was a great role to, to get in here. Another highlight this year is PowerSchool. So PowerSchool is our student information system, and it's really, we really want to tap into it better than we have in past years. So we want to be the source of data, the source of truth, if you will. We have data that feeds other systems, but we want it to all come from PowerSchool. And so to do that, we've, uh, Again, back to our network and systems app, and he's really the one who's going in there and programming PowerSchool, creating a lot of the online tools that we're rolling out. Um, part of the registration we rolled out to the parents through Parent Portal is the student information form. Um, so that's all online now, and we're going to utilize that more and more. Another thing we're very excited about is um, we're investigating a new system that interacts with PowerSchool that is going to allow us to do digital documents. So currently we're mailing out hard copy, uh, report cards, progress reports, and such. Um, this is a very simple system that just integrates with PowerSchool. Um, report cards will be posted to the parent portal. Parents can go right there and, and see the PDF of the report cards. Um, so really excited about that. Um, look forward to that. Doug, let me jump in there for one second. 
uh, just just as progressive as we are in terms of technology, um, we really are a little bit behind in terms of going to online report cards. So the fact that we're going to make this move, uh, and we anticipate to do this third trimester, roll this out. Second or third. Second or third trimester to roll out uh, the fact that we're not mailing <coughs> progress reports and report cards home. It's all right there on the laptop. We shouldn't have to send that home. So that will be a big shift uh, in this community. So uh, something I just want to, again, highlight. Yeah, no, it's great. We've been passing it on our um, test system, and it's pretty flawless. So I'm pretty excited. Another big highlight that we're working on this year that I'm involved in and pretty excited about is the Massachusetts Frameworks for Computer Science and Digital Literacy. Currently, we have a team of the three teachers from the three schools, we have Mrs. Maraca, uh, Mr. Bellrose, and Mr. Messina from the high school and middle school. Uh, myself, Dr. Branco is involved as well, um, Dr. Flanagan, of course. And we're pretty excited about this. Massachusetts rolled out these frameworks, I think, around 2016. Um, and, and they make sense. You know, a lot of times we talk about digital citizenship, um, digital literacy. They kind of baked it all into four core columns that span from kindergarten all the way through high school. So currently the team, again, we met once in November, I think it was. We dove into the frameworks, got a good understanding of what they are, what they're, what they're trying to do. Uh, we looked at our current state of technology curriculum at TPS at all levels. Um, and right now we're going out and we're looking at other districts and seeing what they're doing to, to meet these frameworks. Um, there's a lot of pre-made curriculums to, to organizations like Code.org, code Google, um, a couple other ones, a bunch of other ones. We have a whole booklet of those, so we're reviewing those as well. So the next step is to review those, um, to come back, to come up with some recommendations about what it's going to take for us to, to implement these frameworks. Because um, we are a little behind in terms of you know our, our curriculum and what we're doing with technology education, so I think it's a good thing all the way around. So the big initiative, as you know, as I spoke about last year, was BYOD at the high school. Um, we 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 did it. We rolled it out, and we thought it was important to, after one trimester, three short months, get a feel for how everyone's feeling about. You know, we can walk around and see it in use, but you know, are we using it correctly? Is it working? Is it not working? So what we did this past week, I think it was, or two weeks, um, we sent a survey to students and teachers with the same questions, similar questions, because we wanted to compare the student view to the teacher view um, and see where, where their heads were. So 303 students out of 490, 460 um, responded, 34 teachers, uh, responded to the teacher survey. I'm just going to kind of walk you through a little bit now on, on some of those results at a high level. I'm going to put together a more formal, um, succinct analysis of the data. So there was open-ended questions as well as um, multiple choice questions, you know, how are you feeling about certain things. As you can see here, um, this is just for the students, we had in three students, um, trying to gauge their participation in UIRD. How many students are bringing a device other than a cell phone um, which is still a valuable tool, as we know. Um, how many are you bringing them to school? 91% of them are, 8% are not, out of the 300 bridge students. I thought that was a great number um, right there. Next question was how often, if only for briefly. Um, again, you know, when we're not saying we need to use a device every class, all class. Some teachers will just use it for a check-in or a check-out, and that, that's a great use of technology as well. So how often, if only briefly, um, are you using technology in the classroom? Um, this is very interesting because students felt like they were using it more daily than teachers said the students were using it. Um, but, but pretty close, daily and frequently, um, really high numbers out there. 74% of teachers are using it daily or frequently. 81% of students say they're using it um, frequently or daily. Each question also had a kind of, um, as well as doing multiple choice, a little comment section to, to clarify your answer. Um, some teachers, for instance, said they weren't using it because they were a gym teacher. Um, they don't know how to use it yet as a gym teacher. Um, so that's fine. Just some random answers. Teachers using it for online textbooks, Google Classroom, tutorial videos, Alex Math Program, which has been a big hit this year. That was part of the new McGrath, um, McGraw Math Curriculum that we rolled out. Um, 
this year, last year? This year. This year. Um, teachers are loving the Alex Math program. Students overwhelmingly said they're using technology to take notes. And we'll talk about that um, a little bit down the line here. And virtual high school. We have students, I think there are more students this year using the virtual high school, which is the online learning, taking a class online um, than we have before. So to what extent did the UIRD program help to increase engagement? So what we're looking for here is you know, how, how engaging is this technology? I always hear that oh, students are more engaged, it's more interesting, that's why they need this technology. So we want to see what, what our students and teachers thought about that. So again, teachers, 50% said great or moderate, and had a great or moderate effect on it, and students felt that 68% of them felt they had a great or moderate effect. Um, but that was interesting there that the students <coughs> felt that they were more engaged than the teachers felt the students were more engaged. And just some um, summaries of some of the answers, uh, explanations. The teachers felt that it differentiates instruction better, helps with interactivity, it's easier to make it a regular activity, and students seem more comfortable with their own device. Students also said that a couple times within the survey that they felt comfortable with their own device. They felt more organized. Um, one student felt like uh, it, was, it was less germy to use their own device. <laughs> um, students like the ability to take to type notes. Uh, but on the flip side of that, a lot of students also said that they still prefer handouts um, or, or reading a physical book as opposed to online. And perfectly fine. Easier to get work done, more interactivity again. Question here, we're trying to really um, get into the voice and choice. So how much is technology allowing students to have more voice and more choice in either the way they learn, um, or on the teacher side of it, how they assess students. You know, instead of giving them a multiple choice test or an essay, are they allowing them choice and voice to, to show their learning in different ways? So again, it was interesting here, teachers, 51%, um, we're, we're in the great or moderate category, um, thought that it provided more flexibility on the way students learn, voice and choice. And students, you know, were even greater than that, 69% of them thought that they had more voice and choice. Um, so I thought that was very interesting. So students, again, feel like they're, they're more engaged and they have more voice and choice with technologies. Teachers saw it a little lower than that. Not quite sure what that means yet, but as I analyze this, I'll let you know. Um, some of the again, uh, answers to those was the ability to choose digital versus paper. Um, that's how they interpreted the voice and choice. Um, ability to share comments and obviously, again, students felt that it allowed them to take notes and many forms, easier to look up information, they can be more creative with projects. And I think this is the last, second to last multiple choice question. Um, overall, has the BYMD program been positive? addition to the TH educational environment, again, in three short months. Teachers, 72% either strongly agreed or agreed, and students, 74% either strongly agreed or agreed. Um, neutral, kind of threw that in there. I'm not a big fan of the neutral. I like, to, I like people to pick sides, but 22, 23% were neutral, and very few disagreed or strongly disagreed. So I thought that was pretty positive as well. A couple of quick open-ended questions. Uh, how has BYOD impacted their instructional practices? So that was the teacher language. Um, and the student language was how does it affect their educational experience? So kind of getting the, uh, the feel from both ends. So teachers, flexibility. They don't have to book labs. They don't have to sign up the cards. Um, we kind of expected that. The, the technology is there. Also ready. Does printing surprise me a little bit? Um, looking at the numbers on our copiers still, we're doing a whole lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, 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 that's, that's a fight for me down the line. Um, <coughs> still a need for printing, and I get it. Um, but they say they're doing a lot less printing, so that's a good thing. Increased use of Google Classroom I talked about, and then easier access to online resources such as simulations, um, that sort of thing. From the student end, there's a whole bunch of easier. So as I look down all the open responses, Easier to, easier to, easier to, easier to, easier to. Um, some of the big users were easier to find resources, stay organized, take notes, and be independent. Um, one for a uh, few people said that it made their backpack heavier. Um, that was the effect it's having on them, but it is more engaging. 
And then overall comments and suggestions, this is where, of course, it's kind of the, I just opened the door, let me have it kind of thing. Um, let us have it. A lot of it's good great, a lot of I like it. You know, so I was feeling real good. Then we got down to the charging, and, and uh, students are uh, saying, and teachers as well, that student devices, um, especially come fifth period, I mean, it's in five periods, I think it's fifth period, a um, lot of dead devices. Uh, we did offer at the beginning of the year to put power strips in all the classrooms. I think nine teachers took us up on that. Um, so we're going to throw that out to teachers as well. We have, I think, maybe a power strip in the library. We're going to look into putting, putting some more there. So we'll talk about solutions to these in a, in a minute. Um, students overwhelmingly, and some teachers really want to, to be able to print from their BYOG devices. Uh, many schools don't allow that. Um, and I see both sides of it. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not taking a side here. What I want to do is meet people you know, where, where, where their needs are. And so we see that as, as something that's important to people. So in a minute we'll talk about how we're going to uh, approach that. And Wi-Fi is funny. So <coughs> it's always good when you throw out a survey right at the end when you have a problem. Um, so for the first two months, I would say everything is good. Uh, then we had a little issue for about a week with our Wi-Fi, uh, which was actually hardware related. So, so the rumor out there was we had too many devices on our network and it just crashed the Wi-Fi. The reality was um, we put in a new firewall this summer. Uh, great firewall from a great company. And luck would have it that we got a, a bad one. Um, three months in, the power supply went. We got an RMA, which is a, a replacement shipped to us next day. Had another bad part in that one. So after three firewalls going back and forth in the, uh, in the mail, we finally got one that, that's been up and running. But of course, the survey took place right after that hit and miss of uh, internet connectivity for, for onwards of a week. Um, some comments were interesting, saying it was down for two whole weeks. Um, typically, it's down for about two hours a day here and there for a few days. But regardless, perception is reality. And of course, we know that our Wi-Fi our network, our infrastructure, especially with all these devices, is our number one need right now. So we definitely have to make sure that we have a stable Wi-Fi, stable network, and we're we'll talking a second on how we're going to do that. And then use devices more. Students um, wanted to use devices more. There were a lot of responses that said, hey, I'm bringing a device. Some of my teachers are using them. Some of them aren't. Um, I'm using them in one class. Some, some are using them in all the classes. So, so usage was kind of uh, an up and down there. So let's talk about next steps. Again, I think all the, the good things we heard are good things, and, and we want to keep that going. But of course, we need to focus on, on the needs right now. So charging, as I mentioned, we're going to put some more power strips around in the classroom. We're going to see what we can do out here in the library, maybe in the cafeteria, for students to charge their devices um, safely and securely. Printing, we're, we're currently exploring a print server. So how can we allow students to print um, efficiently, effectively, um, all of that, and, and easily. Because again, with different devices, you know, whether you have an Apple or a Mac or a Chromebook, it's going to be a little different. Um, there's ways to do it, so right now we're playing around, we're exploring with what's called a print server, um, and then how we can also manage the student printing. We can just <coughs> open it up and, and see what happens and, you know, have to dial it back. Or there are ways to um, different applications where we might be able to give certain limits to students based on, on some logging or credentials. So we're definitely looking into the printing um, because it's important to people when we get it. So Wi-Fi is two different things, coverage versus bandwidth. So coverage means the access points you have in all the rooms. And again, we have one in every classroom. We have one in the common spaces, the library, the cafeteria. We do need a few more, uh, especially in the library, cafeteria, and we're mapping out if there are any other dead spaces in the building. On the flip side of that is what's called bandwidth, and that's how much picture of faucet, how much water is coming out of the faucet, how much internet connection is coming out of, of all these access points. Um, right now we have what's called 300 mega, megabytes per second coming in, and it's doing okay. 98% of the time that's enough. When we look at the charge, there's been a few days where we've gone over that, meaning there's a whole lot of people doing a whole lot of things on the internet. Um, so it's taking up all the bandwidth. All the water. Someone else goes to turn on the faucet, they're just getting drips at that point. Um, so that, that's bad, that's important. Um, again, 96% of the time, 98% of the time, we're sufficient. 
we need to bump that up, which we expected. Um, the current standard right now, if you look on the, the Department of Ed site under technology and the information superhighway company that works in Massachusetts, they're suggesting um, schools should get upwards of one gigabyte um, per second. Um, again, that's high usage. The internet here covers high school and middle school, so we don't feel like we're there yet. Um, but we do need to upgrade to about 500, uh, maybe 750. So we're looking at, at doing that. It's not a huge jump. And then redundancy. So as I mentioned before, the firewall goes down. We have one point of failure right now. So the internet comes in, it goes to our firewall, which is just networking equipment, and then it goes out to all of our users, all of you sitting in this room, all of our students. Any one of those links breaks, the whole school is down in terms of internet connectivity, whether it's the, the line out in the street from the internet to the firewall, firewall to the users, and that's what happened. The, the middle device there failed. Um, it's just a break in the chain. What a lot of businesses and schools do um, is they, they put in redundancy, which we're looking into. So you would typically have one large internet connection coming into your building, and then one very small, cheaper backup one coming in um, for emergencies if the line out on the street ever goes down with Verizon, let's say. So we might have Verizon coming in for our main huge amount of internet bandwidth, we might have a very small Comcast one coming in um, for emergency uses only. We have basically two firewalls, an active one and a passive one, and those are all connected. So if one goes down, it just fails over to the other one. Um, and then, of course, those will both feed the users as well. Um, not, not a huge, huge cost. Um, so again, something we have to look at again for the budgeting season right now. Something we need to look into for the coming year because, again, this is our, our number one source of right now of anything we're doing. And then, <clears throat> besides the infrastructure, most importantly to me when I you know, briefly look at these survey results, I just came in within a few days, I'm going to analyze them more, is we talk a lot about what we're doing with technology. And as I read through the note-taking and the note-taking and the note-taking, um, that's great, we're using technology. Right now we're using it what's called the substitution level. So we're using technology to do something that we can do without technology. Right? We can take notes with a pen and paper still. We could take a quiz with pen and paper. We could read a book instead of reading it online. All of that stuff is great, and it's, it's great for people to do with technology, but it's at the substitution level. The main goal as educators, because we want to get our students to the redefinition level. What, what are we doing with technology that couldn't be done before, or can never be done if you don't use technology? <clears throat> so some of the things um, getting to that level, as we've seen in, in the past years, is the Spanish class who is now conversing with someone in Portugal, right? You couldn't do that without technology before. Um, if you look at the telephone, but that's technically technology. Um, what are we doing to create content, to share content, you know, outside the classroom walls with technology? Not just taking notes and organizing stuff on our device. So while we're doing good things right now, I think there's a lot of good things we could be doing. And again, with the digital learning specialist, uh, with our great teachers, with the professional development, that we've been doing and are going to continue to do, I think we can really dive. You know, one shows it as a dive, one shows it as a ladder. So dive or climb, however you want to look at it, um, to those deeper levels of technology use. Um, so that's what I'm excited about is to get there. You know, the infrastructure is good and we're going to make that stable. Um, but this is where this is where the rubber hits the road right there. Is is what we're doing with technology to take us up here. Questions for me? Well, thank you for the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of information. Yeah. There. That was a lot of information. Mm. Um, we will start with my friend Mr. Mitchell over here. Well, thank you for your uh, presentation. A couple of things. You know, you talked about your you know, deep dive into technology. Are we doing anything to uh, put more information on the Tinker Public Access? TV station is you know, putting like the Tiger Talk things in. You, you said something about putting on YouTube. Is th those things can they go up on the public access? Yeah, we're at the elementary level. It's a little different. Um, we we have been working closer with Steve Rogan, the media director, mm -hmm. uh, with the town. 
um, of course, with the, the school committee. <coughs> I think we're live tonight even with that. But we do want to continue to work with them to do that. Um, I know other tabs are definitely doing that. So as we're getting into the podcasting, you know, obviously the next level up is the, the video, um, things like that, TV shows. So we don't have anything lined up, per se. Well, we do have Crossing the Bridge, which goes up. That's our TV show we started last year that we put up on Spring Trimester. But I, I certainly think it's something that Tom Varno could see uh, what's going on in some of the classes that might be content worthy to get over to Steve to get on that channel. Um, Tom's kind of the guy that's, that's out there in the classroom seeing what's going on. Even even a behind the scenes look at, at this new podcast room at the middle school or, or what Tom's doing with this podcast. That's stuff that we can get to Steve to get out on the, on the um, TV station. I mean, even public information like this week, you know, just having a kid present that this week there's a hockey game in Gracious or a football game, you know, whatever the activities are that are going on in the school system, to, you know, so those are public information type of thing. It's just a, a way to give some kids some. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I, I think that's that's the next level of partnership between the town side and the school district side. So what's the what's the adult power going to be that makes that happen? So it's going to take someone on our side working with someone on their side yeah. in partnership to make sure that we have we people to get that content up there. You know, it, it can be created, um, but we need to make sure it's appropriately allegedly posted and put out there. Um, well, Steve does a lot of that Facebook Live yes. and, and all that. Yeah. You know, that would yeah. be that would be a great way for really for us to work our way in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd just, just like to see some more <coughs> ways to get information out to the community about <coughs> different things that go on. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, when you mentioned that, I was thinking more of the live things, but yeah, even the uh, recorded and yeah. Yeah. The information that scrolls on the education channel. Yeah. Giving the kids in the, some of the media classes the ability to sort of use that as a teaching tool how do we present this better or how do we do you know we get that out to the community and get feedback and comments that way yeah that's a great idea uh, the other uh thing that i was wondering the um, firewall about what's the cost of the firewall so after e-rate which is the, the government program um that we get funding from we get roughly 40 percent i want to say it's around so just to have one sitting in the closet somewhere, yeah. mm -hmm. just so that you can plug it in, go back up the line. Insurance. It's insurance. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I do. Yeah. You know, <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> in your bathroom. Right. Right. When you shut down, you can't. Right. Not make your money. So. Right. I understand. Yeah. It's it's a best practice. Is <coughs> should be doing. I fully support. I mean, I need to be Even you know, if it's not. not rely upon that tool immensely and you imagine teachers trying to teach and they don't have access to Google Docs anymore. So well even if it's not, you know, plugged in ready to turn over, at least it's there and you know, right. within an hour you are back up and running. Right. And you can have them both plugged in and then they yeah, do what's called load balancing. Yeah. Um, so if too much is coming through one, it'll kind of shift some of the, the load off to the other. So so it's not just sitting there dead, so to speak. So when we start developing budget, we'll have that conversation. That's what I. There's a lot of information. It's really good stuff. I'm looking forward to your deeper analysis. So you dig into that data. You in? Oh, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, if. I've got a question I want to ask, and if it's something that you'd rather push off to a separate presentation, please feel free, okay? I actually wanted to ask him about, Derek, about data security, um, if that's okay. The, at the MASC meetings that we were at a couple of weeks ago, one of the uh, sessions was about data security and having a process in place. Um, that if you are your information is breached, that you have a process in place for notification uh, and uh, for backup and reestablishing your, your data. Um, the presenters were making uh, a big case for it because one of them did not 
and did not notify the Attorney General immediately, and they started being fined quite a bit of money. Uh, and I'm just wondering if we have that system in place here right now, uh, and if it's actively updated or regularly updated. Yeah, I mean, we have some documentation. We don't have a very formal, what do we do if this happens, for, for a lot of different things. No, this mm -hmm. is something we definitely need to work on. Um, so I guess the short answer is no, we don't have a formal process in place right now. How much data do we actually store on a local server versus just Google yeah, Classroom? Again, our school is really our source of data for, for PII data. So, you know, personally identifiable information. Um, names, addresses, uh, I, don't, I don't believe we keep social security numbers anywhere. Um, obviously credit cards we don't keep anywhere. Um, so I'd also have to look at exactly what data we are storing and, mm -hmm. and what are the rules, regulations, whatever you want to call them around, how best to yeah. make sure we're secure. This, this was a case where um, the servers were <laughs> locked out like you like see in the news a lot of times, service gets completely locked out, and you get you get a notification saying you pay us a ransomware. A ransomware. And, <laughs> and it happens. And one of the schools in Massachusetts, several of them, have had this happen to them already. And they did not have a plan in place uh, for that. Uh, one of them did pay it immediately, but they still didn't notify the attorney general's office that it happened, and they were still fined a considerable amount of money, upwards, so upwards of three hundred thousand dollars. Am I wrong that uh, the majority of our identifiable information is kept on not on our servers but on third-party companies? Like, so we is this? Do we own the server that the power school server? Mm -hmm. So if we own that, then do we have to work with them with that company for a backup? No, what the server's here. It's here. Yeah. So there's yeah, you don't have to do anything. Clock. You don't have to do anything with them then as far as that. Nope. It's okay. hosted here. It's all right here at our server. Okay. What's critical in that case is making yeah. sure that the backup is being done correctly. Mm -hmm. Because what should be done, what you probably should do is go to to a backup at some point in time and see what's not there. Right. And make sure that that's done because that's where we get held up. Is that it happened to my company, and the backup wasn't being done correctly. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't, mm -hmm. we had to pay them. Mm -hmm. So as a member of the school committee, a member of a technology company, we do a lot of stuff. The first recommendation is to not pay that. The better one is to have a business company to in place with that type of mm -hmm. events. Um, backups, offsite backups, maybe once a year, test it, make sure it all works. But I can maybe talk to you offline. So maybe the yeah. technology subcommittee may meet, should, should meet on this and have a yeah. further conversation about this. Yeah. 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 So Thankfully, one, one Russians, Russians aren't looking at things, bro. So <coughs> we're lucky there. So, yeah, but a lot of people are. Hey, Trump came here, yeah. so you don't know. Yeah, that could be from there. Yeah. Um, I have no questions. Um, yeah, I'm just happy to see that the kids have taken it. Derek, you said that 91.2% of the students are bringing their own devices? Of the ones that responded. Right? Of the ones that responded. <laughs> um, and then 8.8% 8 .8 are not. Right. What was our goal of participation when we rolled this out? <laughs> did we 100%. have one? <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, we wanted everybody to have I think when we did the pre BYOD survey, um, asking, I think we asked parents, will your student be bringing a device? 
Um, the number that said they would not be bringing a device was definitely higher than that. I want to say it was 12%, maybe number 15, and it's going back. And did they give a reason at the time why? Or do we know why 8.8% of our students are not? Is it a no, financial I mean, the thing? Only, it? The only reasons we have right now is, is what they said in the preview IOD survey. Um, and some of that was cost related, some was philosophical. Um, they just didn't believe the students should have devices. When we put that pre survey together, uh, we held parent forums here. Derek and I were on the phone with representatives from DESC, and there were very strict guidelines similar to um, when you do free and reduced lunch applications, that the questions you can and can't ask. Right. Um, so a lot of it um, you get anecdotally through conversations between kids and teachers, and, and it's all over the map from philosophical to uh, have a couple of devices uh, to I don't trust my 16-year-old to not break it. You know, like a right. real humanistic <laughs> reason across the board. Yeah. What's more important to me from a teaching and learning standpoint is that 8%, you know, represents, you know, real faces and real names and so the teachers know who those kids are and we have plenty of other devices in the school district to, to make sure that if, if, if a lesson has to have involve technology we don't have kids sitting there without a device. Well and I think our goal was 70% as long as we had 70% of the kids bring right. their own devices we had enough devices Correct. to handle it. Correct. Uh, right. to maintain it. Every kid has a device. Yeah. yeah. So. And are we putting anything up to our parents telling them what how helpful this has been for their children um, yeah, so and what I'd like to, to do bring up more parents yeah. um, into it. Yeah, what I'd love to do in a very short term, especially before Christmas, is, you know, again, really dig into this data, come up with a nice, succinct way to, to highlight the positives um, and somehow publicize that, whether it's through a technology update to parents or whatnot. Um, and do we still have deals available? Who's that one, sir? Any With uh, a Chromebook company, we don't uh, at this point, no. no. Not so much, no. no. <coughs> Especially with Chromebooks, with the price point that they're at, it's hard to get a good deal uh, right. unless you're buying hundreds at a time. Anyone else? Thank you, Mr. Piper. Yes, really thank appreciate you very it. Much, Mr. Thank you. We'll move on to finance. Mr. Messina. Much less information than Mr. Pipe had for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, 14 bill warrants were presented to the school committee tonight. Uh, the list of warrant numbers, accounts, and amounts are uh, in your approval drive. Uh, we have no signing of payroll. We'll catch up at the next meeting. And nothing from me for other. Wow. You were kidding. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That was a large order. <laughs> 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 we will move on to school committee discussion. Stay with Ms. Fairbanks. Okay, I have nothing tonight. Thank you very much. I'm all set. Thank you. I just recognize uh, tomorrow is a national day of mourning for uh, President uh, George Herbert Walker Bush. So um, some people have a day off. Some um, people don't. Actually, I just want to make present day. Thank you. Well, I just want to thank Mr. Piper for the presentation tonight. Um, I had the luxury of looking at the data ahead of time, and I think what jumped out at me and Derek and I had a, a, an interesting discussion about it is that the student reports and how they are reporting voice and choice and effectiveness and engagement higher than their teachers. And so that's going to be interesting to come back when we talk with faculty um, who I think just because we teach the way we teach and, and we, we're so immersed in our subject here, we don't necessarily notice the impact this is having, but we're clearly hearing from students that you're meeting us where our world is currently and, and where our needs are. And, I, and that was uh, that was half the battle with this. It's not just about dropping devices and things, but we're only keeping up with the Joneses as far as what we're doing. It's really about giving our kids an opportunity to be on an equal playing field and meeting them where they are in the world they live in. Um, so, and I applaud Derek and all the teachers um, for making that work happen and students uh, you know when you do a, a survey like this you go like this you hope the kids are going to re respond and 300 plus students actually took the time to reply it says volume speaks volumes to me about how much the kids in this community care about giving us that feedback too so thank you for doing that uh, it was a great uh, community event this week at the festival of trees i know that uh, 
hundreds if not thousands of people participated. I want to thank the town for and the uh, rec committee for putting it on. It was a great event. It always is every year. And I think it shows what the, the community is. And uh, I wish everybody <coughs> a Merry Christmas. Yes. Yeah. Good season going. Thanks. Yeah. So I know we focus on the BYOD at the high school, but the technology really exists down at the elementary school. My fourth grader had a report, and she typed it up on Google Classroom. And Dad, can you proofread this? Okay. All right, now go ahead, turn in, because I'm going to bed. Uh, okay. <laughs> but it, it's that young. So by the time she's in high school, it's not going to be a thought that, oh, wow, we have laptops in school. They're just going to be so used to it. So I, th I think it's great. I think it's great. It's that so young. I just want to piggyback on what Paul said in terms of community event. It was a great uh, festival. Trees it was a great event. Uh, the band had a, a nice performance uh, on uh, Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Saturday. 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 Thank you. Um, on the Friday night for the festival of trees. Uh, but as we talk about communities, we think about community. Um, I, I say this every year. I think one of the most special things we do is our adopt a family program. So any support that you can give to uh, to to the schools, uh, you can contact Mrs. Lenzik or Mrs. Fairbanks. Um, you know, we have, we have families in need, and, and, and around this time of the year, it's probably one of the most special things we can do is support them. So any support you can give financially uh, with a gift, with food, whatever, uh, we'll, we'll take it, and we will make sure the deserving family uh, reaps the reward, the reward of that. So that's all I have. Thank you. We do not have a need for executive session this evening, so I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. I think we should have a lot of discussion about this. Yeah, I think we should. Aye. 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 Aye.